on November 8, 2016. New rules came into effect in Ukraine, which define quotas for Ukrainian language songs played on radio and establish Ukrainian language requirements for radio and television broadcasters. The law was officially passed by the Supreme Council of Ukraine on June 16th of this year. The new law aims to, at least partially, Ukrainianize radio programming in Ukraine, which up until now has been undertaken primarily in Russian. Ukrainian language programming will be phased in incrementally. During the first year, at least 25% of a radio station's daily playlist will have to be in Ukrainian. During the second year, no less than 30%, and during the third year, no less than 35%. In addition, Ukrainian songs cannot be tucked away in the off hours. They must be played during prime time hours. The new law also requires radio broadcasters to ensure that during the first year, at least 50% of programming, such as news and analysis, are in Ukrainian. During the second year, no less than 55% and during the third year, no less than 60%. Hefty fines will be imposed for non-compliance with these rules. There was wide public support of the new law on Ukrainian language quotas when it was put before Ukrainian parliament. However, Ukraine's opposition bloc party, Opozitsiny Bloc, formed by allies of ousted pro-Kremlin president Viktor Yanukovych, opposed the law. Also, several days before the law came into effect, a number of Russian-speaking radio jockeys protested against it, on the basis that it will deprive them of their work. These protests were met with public disdain. Ukrainian music fans organized a flash mob on the day that the law came into effect, encouraging people to share their favorite Ukrainian songs on social media. Even President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko took part, sharing a song by the famous group Okean Elze. The community organization Space of Freedom, Prostir Svobode, has been monitoring the content of leading KU radio stations and their levels of compliance with the new Ukrainian language quotas. The results have been positive. The stations have played, on average, 30.4% Ukrainian language songs. This average is three times higher than it had been a month earlier. However, activists note that Ukrainian language requirements only define the number of songs to be played, but do not designate a required number of minutes for Ukrainian content, a potential loophole they feel, whereby shorter Ukrainian songs and longer Russian songs could now make up radio station playlists. At the same time, some radio stations have switched entirely to Ukrainian language programming and content. And in addition, November 7th marked the launch of the first all Ukrainian language radio station in Ukraine, Radio One.ua, announced by renowned Ukrainian singer and activist and 2004 winner of the Eurovision Song Contest, Ruslana Lezhichko. The new law on Ukrainian language quotas for radio and television in Ukraine has already had a significant impact on the Ukrainian entertainment industry, as the demand for new and existing Ukrainian songs has increased dramatically among Ukrainian radio producers and Ukrainian artists. This trend promises to contribute to the future development of Ukrainian popular music in Ukraine. On October 27th, Canadian composer and pianist of Ukrainian origin, Lubomir Melnik, played his first concert in KU. This renowned, nearly 70-year-old musician has had a full career, which has included compositions on Ukrainian themes, such as Concert Requiem, dedicated to Ukrainian famine victims, and a portrait of Petlura on the day he was killed. Melnik's music is very distinctive, a style that is called continuous music and he is able to perform nearly 20 notes per second, a record-setting speed of play. His creative philosophy is that music should be meditative, and he does not create music,
but rather like an archaeologist, he unearths it from within. Melnik has achieved a cult following in Europe, which was evidenced by the large number of young enthusiasts who attended his Kyiv concert. Melnik earmarked the proceeds of his concert for humanitarian assistance of Ukrainian soldiers and their widows. I'm Tanya Stey, and this was Ukraine in the News. Canal Oden Plus Oden, the part of the Stockholm Nobel International Program.